Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, Momport sent us a laser head and some limit switches for our 60 watt just so we can show everyone how to change them out in case that ever comes up for you. Hey guys, so like Aaron said, we're just going to swap out one, maybe both, we'll see on the limit switches and the laser head. Now, just want to reiterate, nothing wrong with ours, we're just doing this as an informative video to make sure uh, that we know the process and that you guys can know the process as well. I have not uh, really dug into how this is going to be done or watched any other videos, so just going to try to figure it out. Um, there's two different limit switches. There's one on the Y axis and then there's one on the X axis. So we're going to take a look at those and see how they follow. It's routed somewhere, I'm not entirely sure, so we're going to take panels off and see if we can figure out that wiring and where it goes. All right, so make sure your laser is turned off. This is where all of your power is at, so get that thing unplugged. Ours is. Make sure you have the key that came with it. It's a little triangle, and uh, that's what the lock's on. And you got a couple of quick releases. All right, now this panel's out of the way so we won't be messing with it as we dig around in here. Everything's pretty well hidden in here. And they've got tracks on everything, so not exactly sure where things are going and everything's using the same wire pattern, right? So it's all brown, black, and blue. My guess is it has something to do in this particular box because that's your control box and then you've got your motors, power supply, everything else in there. So it's just going to be figuring out which one it is. I'm going to open up some more panels and see if we can trace that wire back. So this gray wire actually looks very similar to the limit switches. I don't know if it's that or for maybe the top closing. So I'm going to look inside the cabinet and see if we can find this wire. Okay, that one's definitely wrong. That is the light. So, struck out on that one. Here's one of the limit switches. So here, it's hard to see, but behind it there's a plastic uh, shroud that wires are in. And it comes around the end of the gantry. And then it's one of these two wires, one of these two gray wires that's going into this cable loom. So that it can travel with it without getting caught. So this cable loom... kicks out right here and you can see all of the different wires which means it's going into this and then it's going to be kicking out wherever it needs to be so we're going to have to take off all of this plastic uh, and see which cable is which. Alright first I am reminded while working on this that this thing is crazy low so I'm laying on the ground working on this doesn't not fun. Second I got these pieces off and it was incredibly difficult. Um, I ended up breaking one of them trying to pop them off. You can't just pop it off. You have to like squeeze these down enough that it unlatches it. And basically what I did is I worked it off far enough that I could curve the piece out and then slide it the rest of the way out. So you can see where it's all flexed and because it was the main bend was right here you can kind of bend it back and I had to do the same thing for this one just bending it up or down enough to get it past this lip and pulling it out so got it off finding that I did locate both of the wires once I got that out they both come through the same spot right here one goes up and connects right here to this first limit switch and the other one I showed you earlier is on the gantry right up here. So this is the only panel you need open until you need access up here from the top. So none of the other stuff in the back needs messed with, it's just this main one. Second thing I noticed and this is a little concerning and good thing we're actually swapping this is that when this was stripped back this wire was cut. So that could have been a problem later on um, it wasn't now, but 
like I said, that's not a good thing. So, good thing we're swapping out the limit switches. And I found where they're plugged in. And this is interesting. So, you can actually see where it says LMT. So that's going to be your limits. And you've got your uh, Y negative and your X negative. Those are the only ones plugged in here. And then there's a bunch of grounds plugged in. And that's the blue one. So there's three of those. I don't know what this black one's for. But it's in there. And then both of the limit switches are in there. And then all of the brown ones, which is the 20 volt, 24 volt power, is coming into this one right here. And it looks like a bunch of them are tied together. Some of them not. Um, and I was looking at the way the limit switches came to us. None of them came with any of these ends. Uh, so hopefully I've got something that will work on this for now. But you might need those ends as well. So all of these should pop out. I'm going to see how easy and or hard it is. Oh, that's not too bad. And then you'll just need a flathead screwdriver. And it looks like they hot glue everything. That one's not even touching it, so that was done fairly quickly. Uh, you can re-hot glue it if you want, but it looks like that wouldn't do much of anything. All right, it's very hard to see uh, the limit switches. This is the one I'm going to start with. It's going to be the easier one. Um, this wire all the way through. There's two Phillips there, which I'll show you on the new limit switch. So the new ones right here, there's going to be two Phillips that go through that. It did come with new ones. So it's got the bolt, nuts, washers, so everything's there. So let's get these two out. Uh, probably not going to be able to see it on camera, but I'll pull those out and we'll see how it connects in. So the two screws came off of that fine. It's just screwed into the aluminum rail up here. And then that comes straight out and runs down to this one. So that's a very easy one to swap out. Uh, the second one's going to be a little bit harder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off up here. I'm going to cut the line. Then I'm going to tape on the new line. And I'm going to try to pull it through the cable tray that way. And if that doesn't work, then we'll have to pull it all apart. So hopefully that works and we're able to get uh, the new line fed through into here. Because once it's here, it's fine. It's just getting it through this um, chain that's going to be not the easiest part. So I'm going to go up there, get that limit switch off, and then see where the best place to try to tape on and pull through is going to be. All right, a little bit of change in plans. This is a good limit switch, so there's no reason to ruin it. If yours is bad... I'd cut it here, tape on the new one, pull it through. Mine's good, it's just bad down here. So I'd like to keep it as a backup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down here because it will still be long enough to take the place of the short side if this one goes bad. So I'm going to cut it down here just far enough that I still know where the cables go. So I'll know where to plug it in at. Then I'm going to feed this up and out. All right, so now it's not hooked on this grommet, so it'll be able to pull a little bit uh, smoother through, which is the other side of it. It's not going to be a super easy pull, but yeah, it's not too bad. So I'm going to tape a string on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it here so a few knots here enough to where I think it's not going to unwind okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a couple of loops around this so that it's looped up here and what we do here is we actually turn it under Right. So I've got the wire under it, so then we pull it, or the string under it. So now what it does is as it pulls it, it just gets tighter there. So I'm going to do that again, under and on. All right. So now there's a couple of places for that. And then we're just going to electrical tape it. And you want to get good tension on it. 
And then you can tape that all the way down. All right, so that's how we're gonna do that. Gonna make sure we've got a pull tab. That's probably too big of a pull tab because it's gotta go through here, but. There we go. That's how we're gonna do that. Now I'm going to try and help feed this through as I pull out the other ends. All right, it is in. All right, got it through. All right, so there's a couple of spots in here that you can really feel tension. It's just where the cables are all kind of smashed together. So it was just uh, trying to guide it, give it a little bit of space and get it through. So opposite. Opposite way now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna tie it on in the exact same way and then I'm gonna slowly uh, pull it through again. All right, have it tied and taped up. Tried to get this end as small as I could, so it's kind of pointed, and maybe will help uh, guide it without it being a huge problem. And just like that, we've got it up. I'm gonna cut this off real quick. Get the string out of the way. And then we'll just finish feeding it through. Okay, before I finish pulling it all through, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this back screwed in where it's supposed to be. And then I did have to take this off. That's where the wires, um, this is what they're using to get it from here to out where it goes on the gantry. So I'm gonna get that in place first and then I'll pull out the rest of the cable and then we can work on feeding it through the rest of the way. Okay, having a very hard time getting the limit switch actually back on. And it's like the wires just, or not the wires, sorry. The screw holes just don't line up. And so what I did is I grabbed the old one, which is this one, and looking at it compared to the new one. And you can tell how much bigger these holes are so that it will actually screw in correctly. I don't know if that's what everyone's is going to look like, but be aware, uh, it might not line up at all. So I'm going to have to try to get something in there, a file or something, get it a little bit bigger and uh, try to get it actually screwed on. Right, so this is how it's wired up right now. I do not have any of these to use. I do have some other pieces, dual ends, solid ends, ring ends. So what I'm gonna do is I'll probably cut this down to where it's only one, and then I'll use that to wire it. Now I've got to redo this one. All three are jammed into that and then the one black one and then in the power one it looks like there's three in that one as well so that one's going to need to pop out there and yeah this one this back one of them uh, is going to need to be done as well so I'll get all of that going and show you when it's done all right so I got it wired, everything's back in place. These are not the right connectors, but they worked. I cut off one end at a much of an angle as I could so they're not touching anything else and they will not pull out. So everything's back wired. Now before I go through this process again, just on the off chance that it doesn't fix it, uh, I don't want to pull them back off again. So I'm going to test the limits, make sure everything works, and then we can finish dressing the cables and close it up. Got it plugged in. I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to keep my hand right here just in case because if it does anything weird or starts clinking, I want to turn it off. But it should auto home, and we'll see what it does. <laughs> All 
right, so the first time I tested it, I figured out a couple of things. The, I had this one too high. So what we needed to do, is that this needs to be able to pass over it like that. It's a proximity switch and it triggers off the top. So same thing on the bottom. Had to get it close enough without being too high on, not the bottom, but on the Y limit switch. Had to have it close enough to the metal that crosses over it, but not too high and not too low so that it actually sees it. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna test it again. Perfect on the first one. see the light light up on the second one all the lights are lit up like they're going boom perfect so we've got the limit switch changed out now just gonna dress the uh, cables inside get the cable covers back on it close it all up we'll test it one more time after that and make sure that it's working now I did have to plug it in so stay away from the power while it's plugged in unplug the wall again before you start messing with that again all right, got them both back in. They went in way easier than they came out. Uh, just on this side, take your time. It does have slots. It's kind of hard to tell, but like down here, same kind of slots on the side so you can push the wires uh, down in there and then they've got a place to come out where they're not getting pinched. So little delicate wires like this, just take your time, get them in the spot you want uh, where there's not a ton of tension. Like all these are good, nice and loose and and close it up after that and we'll test it one more time all right side panels closed we're plugged back in we can turn it on and see how it runs You can actually watch the lights as they come on as the triggers the limit switches and everything looks great when it bounces off and comes back. Alright so we'll definitely get laser head swapped out next. Um, limit switches are working great for now. Uh, did have a few complaints about that. Make sure you have uh, connectors on hand. These are not the right ones. It'd be nice if they sent it out with it. They don't. Um, but, like I said, the only real problem I had with it is that it's so low, it is very hard to work on, uh, kind of laying on your back or your side to get into that. But outside of that, once you figured it out, it, it's really not all that hard to uh, get it wired up and get it working. But if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. And aside from that, thanks for coming and watching. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.